tonight with InfoWars Nightly News. Now, recently, Ron Paul was on the Alex Jones Show, and he expressed concern about the way the police conducted themselves. He had some pretty strong language. He called it martial law, and we agree. Governments are supposed to protect our liberties. Once they decide they're going to make us safe, economically and physically safe, uh, they can only do this by taking away our liberties. Those pictures really concern me. That is such a visual image when you see thousands and thousands of troops, and they weren't your local friendly policemen that were involved. I mean, can you imagine all these people being locked? They became prisoners. It was uh, accepted too easily. It was uh, martial law. But Lawrence O'Donnell took exception to that, and he very strongly called Ron Paul a liar repeatedly on his show for what he said about the way the police conducted themselves, going house to house, pointing guns at people in windows and houses, dragging them out of their houses at gunpoint, uh, going down the streets in armored personnel carriers with full police uh, riot gear. Wait, I want to show pictures okay. first, and then I want to show some of the pictures of the Boston police, okay? Look at this. I mean, if, if this is what you have, why don't you invade a country? Show some of the other ones. I mean, go up to Canada, take their oil. Uh, look at these. These are half tracks. These, I don't care what you, you might, we're going to call it an urban assault vehicle, but this country is becoming a police state, and it is very troubling to me. We believe that's very excessive. We believe that that is setting a template for martial law to be gradually eased in, and so does Ron Paul. But Lawrence O'Donnell called him a liar. He said from the very beginning to say that this was forced is a lie, that the governor was just simply telling people to shelter in place, and it was a suggestion. Police don't need warrants. Families thrown out of their homes at gunpoint to be searched without probable cause. No guns were pointed at any families. What a vile lie. There were no tanks and there were no police pointing their weapons at innocent citizens. Well, when the government points a gun at you and suggests that you do something, we call that force. And they may call it something else, but they're just playing with semantics. We wanted to add to the pictures that people have already seen, pictures that were already there when Lawrence O'Donnell called Ron Paul a liar. So we sent Dan Bedondi to interview residents and tell us what they experienced during this excessive manhunt. And here are those interviews. A cop pointed his gun at me, and then they called SWAT in, and then SWAT came and picked me up by a shield, and they threw me in the back of a car and then dropped me off in the middle of Newton. Well, they dropped you off in the middle of nowhere, and what time of night was that? Uh, what time was that? Like five? Yeah. Broad daylight. They just dropped me off, took me out of the cuffs, and told me to walk. And when they uh, put the cuffs on you, did they read you your Miranda rights? Nope. So you were unlawfully detained from being on public property. Yeah. Did they ask to search your house? Um, they told me they were going to search the house. No, they didn't ask you, they just told you? They told me they weren't coming in to search. And uh, did they command you to leave your home? They told us we had to leave, yes. One thing I was very, very upset about is that when we were leaving here, all my the lights were on in the house, TVs, you know, and um, back door, they had gone the back door down my basement, and... They told me, I said, let me just close all my doors and lock up. And they said, no, they would do it. I came home. Back door was open. This is hours now later. Back door was open. Front door was open. Basement door was open. Lights were on. TVs were on. No one did anything. So they basically left your house unsecured with the doors wide open where nobody was home? Yes, they did. And you say there's bullet holes in your car here? Yes, this is a bullet hole here. Um, Are they going to try that quick? And there's a bullet hole here. I shot out the window on the side there, and in my car, there's a bullet hole, as you can see, I don't know where it is, maybe some car somewhere, I have no idea, but the back window's blown out and the side window's blown out. Wow. What they did, they just disrupted this entire world for a day. We initially got a report from the police department that it was voluntary searches, but then after talking to the residents, uh, we found out that they weren't asking if, if they could have permission to enter homes. They were just forcefully entering people's homes uh, to search. So did they knock at your door just walk in? They knocked the door. But you know what I mean? The door, they almost, they, they almost 
push the door through. Them. And uh, did they ask you to search your home at all, or they just did it? They just did it. You know, they just came in and uh, they're going through. And uh, did they command you to leave your home? Yes. Uh, we left, and they say, let's lock the doors. They say, no, no, we'll take care of it. We'll lock your doors and everything. We came home midnight, and everything was open. And nobody was around here. So they left your house also unsecured and wide open. Exactly. And nobody was around here. What takes anybody? Anybody can walk in. They mistreated the elderly then, right? Yes, yes. Yes, yes you know, I didn't like that. You know, like I said, they tried to do the job, you know what I mean? No. But uh, on this point here, I got very upset, very okay. upset. And, uh, did they ask to search your house or they just searched it? Um, they wanted to search the house, but my grandma said nobody was in there. And then they proceeded to ask my grandma for my my uncle lives upstairs and the house is a deadbolt and my grandma said no there's no one up there I didn't hear anyone go up the stairs but they still made her give the house key and unlocked it with that key and searched upstairs and all the way up to the attic well they they um didn't want to give the key back but they ended up giving the key back my grandma they did and did they command you at all any time to leave your home or stay in the home uh yes, it was stay inside but the thing overall that caught my eye is that my friend on Franklin Street um lived across the street, and the army people did a huge search in their garage, um, but the, the boat was directly across the street. They didn't search the boat, not once. They didn't even go around it. That, that's where the younger brother was found. That's where the suspect was, and it's funny because the police didn't find him when they did the thing. The person finally got to leave their house because they said everyone stay inside. He left his house and saw the blood on the boat. We, you know, had to go through multiple checkpoints and we were searched ourselves. Other journalists on the scene were told to lay on the ground as they were searched. So it was a very, very touchy, very uh, intense situation to be in. Matter of fact, when we woke up, a big shootout that was tiny from a Vietnam. It was looked like a Vietnam so. And the, those guns that were going left and right. <laughs> yeah, and all your neighbor's houses got hit. Oh, we did do the door. Too. We got a storm door. They passed my storm and door. The other doors are and the door. Oh, oh, oh it's upstairs, a bullet yeah. there. It was a bullet there. If I didn't get four more feet on this side, yeah. it would have gotten me on my bedroom. Oh, <laughs> yeah. That's when you're sleeping, too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> were guns pointing at you at any time, and did they tell you to put your hands up in the air or anything? Not me, but my boyfriend. So your boyfriend had his hands up in the air, and they were searching him? Yes, because he came out to check his diesel on the back of his truck. They were pretty much right here in front of my house, and they were just shooting down that direction. Um, that went on for a couple minutes, and then there were there were two more booms, with the last one just really lighting the entire neighborhood up. Um, it shook the house, set off all the car alarms. And, uh, did they make you put your hands up? Um, when we when we came out, we put our hands up and they searched us, but other than that, we just walked down. The and did they ask you at all to search you? Um, yeah, they, they asked, they just, well, they told us that they were going to be searching us.